Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another webinar at the National Library of Scotland. My name is Ken Redpath, and I'm the events officer at the library. Today is a slightly different event for us today when we have a sketch along event, and I'm delighted to be introducing Carol Baines, who's kindly agreed to do today's event. Carol studied for four years at Grace School of Art in Aberdeen, then did a postgraduate year in art therapy in St Albans. She then came to Edinburgh in 1984 and has been here ever since. Carol says art, especially drawing, has always been a big part of her life, although it hasn't been her career. At present, Carol works as a part-time speech therapist, therapy assistant in NHS, which is allowing her more time to spend on our own art and trying to make some sort of living from it. As she says, and I quote, a late starter, but I guess it's never too late to start drawing. But before handing over to Carol, can I just say there will be time for questions at the end of the webinar. So get thinking and just type your questions into the Q&A function and we will do our very best to get through as many of the questions as we can. But for now, over to you, Carol. Thank you. Hello, folks. Um, nice of you to join me. Although I can't see you or hear you, I, I feel your presence. So today, um, we're going to do what it says on the tin, sketch along with Carol. I'm going to just quickly run through a few things about, you know, um, equipment and, and techniques, and then we'll, we'll do a bit of step-by-step -step drawing. Um, uh, you know, a lot of people say to me, oh, I can't draw. I, oh, I, I, my teacher told me at school I was rubbish at drawing. So I have to tell you, everybody can draw. Um, not everybody might be able to draw like Leonardo da Vinci, but if you can hold a pencil in your hand and, you know, put it on the paper, you can draw. So first of all, um, paper. So for today, my, my drawing area, my little sketch pad here is an A5 sketch pad which is like basically half of a you know if you've got a computer printer sheet um i don't know what size of paper you've got i would suggest for today that you you use a smaller bit so if you've got like a a, a printer bit of paper fold it in half so it's a5 size because there's nothing worse than a great big blank page even for somebody who's used to drawing it's like i'm gonna to have to fill that so although I, I would say in future you know when you're practicing yourself go go big you know the bigger the better so for today if you keep keep it small it's easier to fill fill a page um pencils okay at school you would have probably used you know your common garden hb hb pencil and that's like middle of the road so b is is um black and and the numbers that go up so 2b 3b 4b the higher the number the softer the lead so you get a nice soft um they're really nice to draw with actually. H, um, it's it's finer, it's, so H stands for hard, so the lead is harder and the higher the numbers for that then the harder the lead and so you would probably use H pencils more if you were doing fine line drawings of architectural type drawings. Um, for sketching, my favourite, the well, one that I sort of like fall back on is usually a 2B, to be or not to be. Um, I've also got these fancy schmancy pencils, I'll just show you my fancy pencils. So these ones, um, I don't know if you can see, like they're retractable. They tend to be HBs, but you get different thicknesses and thinnesses of lead. So some of them go, I don't know if you can see that, but they go really thin. They're really nice to draw with as well. Um, but for today, I'm going to use a 2B. You use whatever you like. And if, if you've only got an HB, that's fine. Just use whatever you've got. But when you buy a pencil set, you tend to get a BB mixture. Um, they tend to give you an HB, a B, a 2B, and then a higher B, and then a higher H. So we'll just um, go with whatever. So that's a wee bit of pencils and paper. Uh, for for drawing, a mistake that people tend to make is holding your pencil too tight and really, you know, like 
really leaning heavily and doing solid lines. This is not what we're going to do. This is, we're sketching. So I want you to practice, just hold your pencil loosely and just, you want to sort of move, move your wrist. So just get a bit of paper and just practice making marks loosely. And I would say to you always, always start light and then you can build up the layers. So if I'm starting to draw, say I was drawing a, I don't know, a, an egg, <laughs> I wouldn't go right in and do this and think, oh no, I've not done it right. And then try and rub that out. I'd, I'd sort of, you know, sketch it, sketch it. Because you can always go back and rub out lines and then you can pick out the ones you want to keep and rub out the ones you don't want to keep. So to warm you up and to practice using nice light things, this is a wee exercise that we're going to do. And it's <laughs> it can be quite hard to do because we're going to draw without lifting our pencil off the paper. All right. So that can be a bit of a challenge. Get a clean bit of paper. Now, um, I don't want, don't want you to do this too huge. So I'm going to draw myself a wee frame inside this page that I'm going to stick to. Okay, so we're going to do a little, the theme, I, I forgot to say, the theme of today is home. So I was thinking to myself, what are we going to draw for home? When I think of home at the moment, I think of pyjamas, sofa, blanket, cup of tea, Netflix. <laughs> but I'm not going to make you draw pyjamas, so <laughs> later on we might draw a cup of tea. But anyway, just now I'm going to just look over at my window and I'm going to draw what I can see and you're going to copy me. And we're just going to do it all without lifting our pencils off the page. Okay, so don't lean heavily. Don't worry about what your what it looks like. Just relax <laughs> and draw. And I'm going to go fastish because I don't want you to. We're not worried about what it looks like. We're just we're just having the experience, <laughs> right? So if you start down the bottom right, sort of about a, what if, we, if that's third, like the bottom third of your page. Start here. And remember, you're not to lift your pencil off the page. Here it goes, so just draw along. So I, this is my window edge, okay, that I can see. And now I'm seeing there's a plant pot thing there. And it's got cactus in it. So I'm just going to do, I'm doing it quite quick and I'm just scribbling, really. And then the line of the window goes up like that. Then I'm coming back down, I'm going along here. I've not lifted my pencil off the paper yet. There's a table, so I'm going down this angle here and then straight along here. Okay, so I've got this kind of thing going on. And then on the table, there's another, uh, I would say vase, but it's actually just a plastic vessel. <laughs> I've broken all my vases. So there's this and it's full of daffodils. So I'm going to, I've still not taken my pencil off the page, have you? <laughs> so it's daffodil stems, I'm just doing zigzags. I'm going to speed up a wee bit because I don't want you to worry too much. So just do, it's daffodils, I'm sure you can tell. <laughs> just do zigzags, okay? Zigzag, zigzag. So we know there's flower heads there. Then back down and in front of that is another pot. It's a candle. Okay, so I'm going to put a wee wick in there. I've still not lifted my pencil. How about you? So then I'm going to go over here and there is, oh, I've got a salt lamp. So that's a big sort of thing like this. And it's on a wee base and there's the cable going down. And I'm going along here. There's a wee lip to the edge of the table, this wee table thing. Back up here, a line down there. And I'm going to go up here because this is curtains. So we'll just put a bit there like that. Then we're going, I'm going to go and do shading without lifting my pencil off. So zigzag down the side of that, zigzag down the side of that, zigzag down there, zigzag down there. And then this is a kind of rough texture. So I'm just putting some scribbles and then zigzag there. And then a bit of darker stuff along there. And then I'm going to lift my pencil off the page. And there's a wee landscape scene. 
So I hope you managed okay with that. Don't worry. Don't even worry what it looks like. It does not matter. It was just an exercise. So you can cast that aside. <laughs> I'm going to talk a little bit about... I'm hoping you're feeling relaxed now. And you've filled a bit of... You've filled a page, so you know, you're on your way. <laughs> so I'm going to talk a bit about um, shading. So in order to make your drawings, you know, go from looking two-dimensional to three-dimensional, you want to be able to add shade. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm just going to find a different pencil because I want to be... Where's my B? Right. So for this, if you've got a new bit of paper, I just want you to draw little rough little squares, six. And that they're about the size of my thumbnail, okay? One, and they don't have to be, as you can see, don't have to be perfect. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's just very rough. This is just because we're just going to practice different types of shading in these little squares. All right. So the first type of shading, and it's very common, is called hatching. And that's basically, now before I, before I, I tell you this, so as you can see, I'm left-handed. So for me, it's, it's very natural for me to go from right to left up the way. But I think if you're right-handed, that will not be so easy. So I'm, I'm imagining I'm right-handed going the opposite. That, so that's, yeah. Do, do whatever direction is the most comfortable for you, if that makes sense. Okay. So hatching, I'm just going to do, it's just basically straight lines across like that, okay? And then cross hatching <clears throat> is same again, straight lines across and then opposite way. I'll talk a wee bit about that in a wee minute later on. Um, there is scribbling, this is this is one of my favourite types of, of shading. I'm quite a messy, scribbly drawer. I like to scribble and blend and then rub out. And along with scribbling, there's, so just you do this with me. There's, this is called, is it called circleizing? It's basically just little spirals. Now that type of shading is especially good if you're doing something that is textured. This is the type of shading that would be used in more sort of um, architecturally type drawings of buildings and things. Um, there's also contour. So if you imagine, yeah, let's just put a circle inside here, okay? So contouring is a bit like hatching, but, but you go in the direction of the shape that you're drawing. So if this was a ball and we wanted to shade it by, if we did it with contour lines, you would, follow the shape of the ball. That's quite good for things like, for example, say you were drawing a mug. Well, actually we're going to draw a mug in a wee bit. In a wee bit. And if you made it a stripy mug, it helps to define the shape of it because that instantly is slightly more rounded looking than it was before. Then this is my favourite. This is blending. So just Put your pencil, you know, make it so that the lead of your pencil is on this on its side, not the point, and just colour in a bit. Just down one half. And again, it's same with shading. I always say start light and build up. So go back to that edge and make it slightly darker on top of the edge. And bring it across. Now, I don't know if any of you saw the list of things to bring, but I did I said if you could bring um a stump if you have it. So if you get a drawing set and you have these things in it, these are called stumps and they're made of paper and they're for blending, but you can do exactly the same job with a bit of tissue paper, a cotton bud or cotton wool or your finger. But basically what you do with these is you, you blend. So you've done your scribbling and then you see you can blend it and you can make it go from dark to light. It just smooths everything off. And that's a really nice way of shading. And also once you've done that on 
on your bit of um, where your lead is, this picks up and you can sometimes as well just draw with what's on this stump. So it's quite nice. And when you've done that, you can also then, I like to do this as well a lot, you can get a rubber and you could draw on it with a rubber. Now it's a quick word about rubbers. So these are my favourite things on this planet. <laughs> they're my pen rubbers. So they're all different thicknesses, as you can see. This one's very thin, so I could actually just do a wee nice wee drawing on there with that. However, if you've got just a normal rubber, you can do exactly the same thing. Just use the corner of it. Okay, but um, yeah, blending and rub using rubbers is quite a nice way of drawing. We'll do a wee bit of that later on. And then this last one, oh yeah, stippling. <laughs> And this is quite a time consuming way of shading, but it's quite a nice effect. So it's basically just dots. Quantalism, I think is the proper term. Now, if you imagine we wanted this to look three dimensional going this way, you want this bit to be darkest. So all you do is stipple more <laughs> down the bit that you want to be darker. So adding layers again, layers, layers, keep stippling. Then as you stipple towards the light, you would lean less heavily and make them further apart. And similarly, there's a, a similar to stippling, there's a thing, it's like, um, what do you call it? Flex, no, dashes, but well, anyway, it's basically like stippling, but longer. <laughs> and same again you know, you could start to do it less, lean less heavily and get lighter. And that's how you go from light to dark. Okay, does that make sense? You know, each to their own, you, you'll find a way that you enjoy best. Um, I find scribbling and blending the best. Right, we'll just have a wee practice now of graduating from light to dark. So, under here, I'm just going to draw a long, thin rectangle, just the same length as that. And I'm going to split it into six boxes. So one, two, three. Oh, not very even, but never mind. <laughs> I'm going to draw another one underneath. If you're very precise, you might want to draw these with rulers and measure them out, but you no, know, that's not sketch or lace, so don't bother. So. <laughs> Just roughly, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Whoa! <laughs> I can't even count. One, two, three, four. <laughs> so I, I was right. Oh my goodness. Sorry, folks. I hope there's homeschoolers here, you know, <laughs> thinking, well, it's not a maths lesson, is it? Right, there we go. I did get an A from higher maths, but that was a hundred years ago. Right, so <laughs> we're going to go from light to dark this away. And we're going to do this all, this top one, all just by hatching and cross hatching. So our first one, we leave empty. Our second one, we're going to hatch, but we're going to do it quite far apart. Okay. And then the next one along, so we're going to do the same hatching again, but closer together. You see, if you half shut your eyes and look at that, you'll see it starting to get darker. Then this one here, you're going to cross hatch. So the same as you did before on that box, but then go back over it the other direction. All right. Then just repeat that in this box here. So cross hatching just the same as you did. Back this way. And then you could add some horizontal and then for the final box just to repeat what you've just done there cross hatching one way cross hatching the next way top to bottom across the way and then you can actually just go over it now if you half shut your eyes and look at that it should gradually go from dark to light so that is with just by hatching 
<clears throat> and then we're going to try the same on this one, going from dark light with by just shading. So what we need to do is actually rub out those lines if you've drawn them, but make it so you can still see lightly where they are. So we're going to practice just shading. So I'm just going to do my shading like this, but we're going to start really light. So don't do anything in this box. And then in this box, start really lightly to shade like that. I'm hardly touching the paper. Then as I move into this one, I'm touching the paper a wee bit more. So it's getting a wee bit darker. And then as I move into this one, I'm leaning a wee bit heavier. It's all very gradual. I'm still not leaning heavily at all. And then I'm getting a wee bit heavier. And then I'm going to lean quite heavily on the end here. So then I might look at that and I might go back over this one. So this is going to be the darkest one. So I'm leaning heavier. There we go. Then gradually into this. I'm just going back down the other way now. Adding my layers. But now I'm getting lighter as I go. And I'm hardly touching at all. There we go. And you can see the grading there. And if you got your blending implement, you could then blend that and make it smooth transition into one another. But you see what's happened there is my blending thing was was dirty. So I've actually now basically coloured it in, but that doesn't matter. So, you know, mistakes are good, that's fine. So I've coloured that in. This, this is what happens. I, I do a combination of blending and hatching and scribbling. So you would, you could then go back and, you know, add more to the top of that. It's just a bit, it's about building up the layers. And then if you thought, oh, that's that's not light at all, get your rubber and you could rub that bit off. You see? So it's just about practicing. And when we are doing three-dimensional objects, so let's, for example, let me just draw, if you draw your wee rectangle there, In fact, let's just draw a little box. So draw that rectangle there and then do a line. Oops, what's that? If that's your clock face, that would be like five o'clock, a line like that. And like that. So we've got a wee box there, okay? I forgot why I was doing this. Oh yeah. So we want to shade. Imagine the lights coming from over here. This is our darkest plane. So you would, you would shade that in. This is not what I was going to describe, but anyway, this, this is a good thing. So there you go. That's the darkest bit. The light actually, I'm wrong, it's shining on here. That's your lightest. That's in the shade. This top one would be in the shade, but not as much shade as that one. See what I mean? What I was meaning to draw and describe for you, so if you do a wee quick circle, this is just very quick. And if we were shading down the edge of that circle, so I'm going to just scribble shade just now. You want your, your darkest bit of shading to be beside the line. So you would have your line of your drawing and the darkest bit of shading and then it gradually coming away from there. And then you could use your stump to just... Now, you see what's happened? Left-hander's nightmare. I've got pencil all over, my, all over my hand and I've smudged all this, what I've drawn already. You can stop that happening by putting a bit of paper under your hand if that's the case. But anyway, don't worry about that. Right, so we've done a wee bit of shading. Let's do some drawing. <clears throat> so I'm just going to turn the page over. I'll just get someone to lean on for a second. There we go. Right. So I was talking, we were mentioning the theme of home and I was thinking like, what else makes them go? So yeah, a, a mug of tea. So let's try drawing a mug because that'll 
we'll be able to do a bit of our shading. When, when you're looking at objects, what you want to do is try and see the basic shape to help you as a guideline. So if you think about a mug and you look at it, the basic shape of that would be, it's a rectangle really. So just draw yourselves a reasonable size rectangle, not too big. So, and again, rough, just roughly sketch it in. You know, nobody's coming to measure your angles, it doesn't matter. So there, I've drawn that. It's about the size of my thumb. Okay, so that's our basic shape. And then the handle, the basic shape of the handle would be, it depends on the handle, it's either going to be a rectangle like that, or let's do a, just draw a triangle on the sides there, like that, or just now. Now you might get a nice modern mug that looks like that, but <laughs> we're going to do it differently. Now, you would rarely see a mug that looked like that unless it was right at your eye level on a shelf. So when it's on the table in front of you, you would obviously see a bit of the top. So this is where drawing an ellipse comes in handy. So you can either just, we're starting here, you can either just draw an ellipse like that, but if you find that hard, draw yourself a thin rectangle on the top there and put a cross, a line down the middle and a line across the middle there. So you've got a sort of cross, okay? And then to draw your ellipse, you would have a wee curve where your line meets the edges like that. And then you could join them up. But really, it's much better if you just practice. It's a good thing to practice. Practice drawing ellipses of different depths because they turn up in lots of different things that you draw, okay? So, but however you do it, if you've got an ellipse along the top there, okay? And then we're going to firm up our line that we drew before, just come straight down. Now see this curve here? You want to make that same curve on the bottom there, the same depth of curve. So you're just basically adding a slight curve on the bottom. Okay, so your line comes down, straight down, and slightly beveled round like that. Same on this side. Bring your line straight down, and then just slightly bevel. So that there is the same curvature as that there. Okay, have you managed that okay? Right, then next we shall attempt the handle. <laughs> so uh, handles are hard, but don't worry. So just start your pencil here, just put a wee curve like that, and just basically curve round like that inside your triangle. Then you bring it down the line of your triangle there, when you get to the bottom, before you, before you get right down here, just kind of swing over a wee bit, a bit like an ear. So I've just brought my... See, it's a slight curved line. I've brought it in a wee bit and then I'm just going to do that. Then I'm going to come up a straight line from there so that this distance is the same. Curve round. Try and keep that the same distance all the way, this distance here. Curve round and then just add yourself a wee blip on there where it attaches. Okay, don't worry if you can't do it, handle too much. Right, let's rub out some of our guidelines that we had. Just tidy up a bit, so carefully rub out the lines that you don't need. So these crosses that you might have added. Let's see here. Right, so that's a bit tidier. Okay, we'll just rub it this. Right, then we're going to do a bit of shading. So we want this to look more three-dimensional. And for this, my light source is coming from this direction. So my shadow, my darkest shadow will be around this side. So what we can do is we can do a bit of hatching and contouring. So if, if you I quite like to, I call it flicking. So if that's my drawn line that I want the shadow to go that way, I would start on the line and kind of flick my pencil off 
a bit like growing eyelashes, you might imagine. So I'm flicking, so lifting my pencil off as I go across. Does that make sense? But I'm also want to try and make my lines go like, you know, curved. So just give it a try. Just go down the side of your mug, flicking as you go. If you find that hard, then just let's just do scribbling. So if you if, if you've got a blender and you're finding the flicking hard, you can do this just shading it in by colouring in or scribbling. Okay, and then we'll blend it. But if you manage to do flicking, we could do a, a mixture. So let's let's scribble and blend to begin with. So I'm scribbling down the side there. I'm just going to do a little tiny bit of shadow around the bottom there because it's slightly beveled. Okay. All right, I'm just getting lighter as I go around there. Then we'll stop there and get something to blend it with. So I'm going to go down that edge, blend it, bring it across, start to lift the blending off so it's lighter. And this is where you can start to, you can use your blender but in the direction of the contour of the mug. And then I'm also going to just put a wee bit down that side there, just as it goes round the corner. No, it's not corner, it's a, it's curved. <laughs> okay, and then what I'll do is I'll go back and just redefine my line. And put some more shading down there. And I'm going to go up to the top here. <clears throat> So that this side of the inside will be lighter and this side will be darker. And what we'll do is we'll put a wee, so if you just put a wee rim like that, that's your tea <laughs> or your coffee. So it's the same contour as this. And you can just lightly shade that in like that's tea or coffee, whatever your tipple is, gin, I don't know. Right, and then we're going to do shading. So the, the darkest bit will be over this side coming around this way. So again, I'm sort of flicking. Flicking around that way. And there will be a wee bit just there, just to show that that goes around like that. Okay. So your light, I've drawn a, 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 the light's actually coming this way, really, isn't it? Not that way. Doesn't really matter as long as it's come from one side. So you've got your, and you can use your rubber to, to sort of highlight as well. And then we'll just add a bit of shading to this handle. So I'm just going to rub out these messy lines. So what you want to do is you want a bit of shading right, up, right around this bit here on the inside till you get to about there. Okay. And also just shade up that a wee bit. And then you want to come down this bit and put your shading underneath this side. And round. And then also a bit of shading here. Okay. There you go. Have you got something that looks like a muck? You could add stripes if you want or you could add a design I don't know if you add stripes it kind of helps the helps you see that it's coming round from this side like that and round from this side like that okay and then you would sit it on a surface through the line and yeah there'd be a shadow out the back here There you go. Have you drawn a mug? <laughs> right, let's move on quickly. So let's see what else in the house. Right, okay, I said I mentioned a cushion before. So that was shading with blending and um, hatching. I mean, you could go over and if I, if I wanted to make that even darker, I could go back and do, let's see, cross hatching. And that just darkens it up. So just, just practice, play about with what you like. So I'm going to go over onto this side of the page and do 
I cushion. I'm just going to cover that up so I don't smudge it all. Right, so for that shape, the general shape we looked at, we saw a rectangle. So for a cushion, it's going to be a square, really, is the the main sort of shape. So I'm just going to take a bit of paper away because it's annoying me. Right, so draw a rough square. Okay. Like that. This is not in proportion, by the way. Otherwise, that would be like a gigantic mug and a very small cushion. <laughs> right, so you've got a square. Um, so just go from that top corner and come down that slight angle like that. And then go from there back up to that corner. And obviously a cushion has never got straight edges. So we're going to come from this corner down sort of a wobbly line and just bring it across like that. And then go from there down into that corner. Then if you come down underneath the straight line, so bring it out like that and back up to this. Okay. And then sort of rounded edge go like that. Put a line there. And go back up the top here. And just do a line that goes in and then back out and down. Right, so I did quite a hard edge there just to so you can see it. But basically that's a kind of not a bad cushiony shape. All right, so then rub out your straight lines. Now we're going to do, remember I said about the scribbly or circly shading for textures. So we're going to shade that this. So this is a obviously made of material. <coughs> so we're just going to start by I'm going to do like little spirals, I suppose. So just start in that top corner and just scribble away. You can do spirals or scribbles. So on, we're going to keep that. We'll keep the dark side over to the right here. So if you start by just scribbling all over, you see how I'm now I'm, my scribbles are wider apart. See, what I mean, there's more white in between. Then here, I'm going to be close in because it's a darker bit under that little fold and around this corner, and it'll be also darker as it's sort of down at the bottom, so you can do a darker scribble along the bottom there and then start to open it up a wee bit. Same here, start to be darker as you get to this line here cause, and under this crease but then open it up again and then you want to be slightly darker Closer together there, then open it up. Okay, so you've got a nice textured cushion. You can go back and add some extra shading to these. So there'll be shade, a bit of shade as it sort of sits slumped on the bottom there. That'd be dark for that bit under there. This would be darker here. Be darker down this side. All round all the edges would be slightly darker just because it's you know it's sort of curved round. And then you could add, you know, lots of it depends what type of material it is. If it's Hessian, you could do lots of wee crisscrossy things going on and again do more where the shade shady bit is and then as it comes out into the middle just do them further apart okay and you could do some highlighty bits so you might want to pick out a wee, just a few wee highlights there see what I mean about drawing with your drawing with your rubber so this bit down here is the sort of lightest bit. Oh, and we could draw pom-poms as well. Could we? No, we don't have time. Anyway, well, I'll do one. 
imagine you were going to add a pom pom. So just draw a circle like that, and then just coming out from the point of that corner, start off by dark as if you're doing eyelashes, and then slightly less flicking, and then you could end up doing dots because then you just see the top. So that's quite a good. You've, you've experienced all kinds of shade in there. So you've got your flicking, your dashes and your dots. And you can see you want to maybe darken that up. So you can go back and add pom-poms to all your corners. But I wanted to move on just to do a few other things before we go. Um, right, things at home. Don't know how many of you have got a cat. <laughs> You're all probably thinking, oh no, I can't draw a cat. Yes, you can, you can. Right, let's draw a wee quick cat. Okay. Right, start off with a sketchy circle. I know this is quite fast. I'm thinking, I think it's being filmed and it's going to be saved on YouTube. So you'll be able to go back and watch it again and maybe pause it and do it in your own time. So, this right, a little... That's correct, it is being recorded and it will be on the oh, there you go. In Scotland's YouTube channel for everybody to go back to. That's good, because <laughs> I'm aware I'm soldiering on, but we'll just keep going, right. So a little circle, so it's only, that's about the size of my thumbnail, all right? Then I'm just going to put a curved line coming down from it, like, a bit like an apostrophe, okay? And then about here, I'm going to draw at the angle of, if this is a clock, you know, like five past, maybe, between five and 10 past, draw a line there and do an oval like that. I know this looks nothing like a cat at the minute, but it will. Okay, and then from the bottom there, imagine four o'clock, say, shall we say, and do a smaller, oval like that. So you should have a circle, a curve, a bigger oval at a bit of a slant and then a smaller oval at a bit of a slant and then follow this curvy line down like that. Okay and then we're going to turn this into a cat of course. So just do a wee line like that over there and then you've got that one there and then do another one just there. So you've got three sort of guidelines there. Then go back up here and we're going to try and draw an actual line. We're going to join up this to this. So just come down and come out a wee bit to the right and put a wee bit like that there. Okay. And then where this bit here comes, just bring your line down and come out round that shape like that. Okay. And then just go around the outside of that oval there. And then when you get to here, just sort of flatten it off a bit. So you've got that sort of a shape. Okay. Then bring this line down and just go out a wee touch like that and then in and back round. Then come up here and just draw a line like that. That's going to be one of the ears. Do a line there, that's the other ear. And go back and just join that one with a wee curve. Okay, so you should have something that looks a bit like this. Then just go to the left of that line there and just, but then just put a tiny wee line like that. Then you're going to make this curve out like that. And then where you did your first, so we've got this, just come out a wee bit more curve out and round like that and then we're going to make this add this tail so just 
take that line around and curve it to one side of that line that you drew and then curve this round to the other side and then as you get towards the bottom it be taper it in so that it meets okay and then we're just going to about so if you've got your ear there put a wee line like that just draw a wee line a diagonal line going from that ear to that where we did that nose and just put in a wee we're just doing a wee suggestion of an eye okay but basically what you want to do then is rub out quickly most of those lines but actually not all of them because if you see it's quite a skinny cat this but anyway just quickly add a bit of shading to that so down this side and where you know take your pencil around like where those curves are just to show the, the shape of its back and this would be its where its spine is so you can just sort of just do a wee um, suggestion of that I'm just going to make that tail a wee bit thicker then a bit shading down there a bit shading around the bottom of his face and then I'm just going to add some whiskers and there you've drawn a cat <laughs> right, I've got another one more thing. I usually like to finish, I quite often finish my drawings with um, drawings of Muppets or something cartoony. So I thought we could do, I don't know if you've seen the film, The Secret Life of Pets. So let's draw a character from that. Will we do a cat or a dog? Let's do a cat seeing as how we've done a cat. So I think the cat, it's a big fat cat called Chloe in The Secret Life of Pets. So you can either do that on the same page or get another page and just turn over. Right, so for Chloe, we're going to start with a sort of egg shape. And I'm sketching, I mean cartoons, that cartoons are where you would do a solid line, but start off with sketch a kind of egg with a flat bottom. <laughs> If that makes sense. So you want this kind of a shape. Okay. I'll just manage that. So and then go up to the top and just do like little flicks like that that show fur coming down. And when you get to here, instead of going around that court, just put a little sort of rounded right angle. Okay, and the same on the other side, just come down the side like this. Then when you get to here, just sort of like do a little sort of rounded rectangle. Hey, go up to the top here and just put two triangles like that. And then we'll go back and sort of add the, make them more curvy. So curve up to that point and down and then just put a few wee hair lines like that same with this one curve up to the point up to the point and then put a few wee flecks like that okay and then there's a couple of wee hairy bits there one two just go over that line there okay now, to do the face, if you go in the middle here and draw a curved line going like that, lightly, and then just from ear to ear, a curve going that way. So you've got a little sort of cross. Okay. Then on the right hand side of that one, just do a flick to the right. So I'm going to go down like that from one eyebrow. And then on the left hand side, a flick down. Okay. Then see where the cross is on the bottom right hand bit. So from that centre point, just do a little flick going that way. That's for one eye, lash. Then just leave a little space and go to the other side of that line and do a flick that way. Okay. Then go 
from that point there, just took a little line up like that, slightly curved, and a little line up like that, slightly curved. Okay, same on this side, a wee curved line up that way, and a wee curved line up that way. Then we're going to just join from there to there with a slight curve like that. Same on this side. And then if you take that line out a bit, because it's like a sort of eyelash. And then here, just draw a wee curve like that and a little sort of rounded triangle. That's for the nose. Then the Chloe always looks fed up. So what you want to do is you want to draw a circle or a bit of a circle in, in here for this eye. So I'm just going to... So it's over towards the left, one wee circle and then another one inside it, like that. And same on this eye, if you draw your circle over to the left and then another one inside it, like that. It gives a sort of like fed up expression. And put a wee nostril on either side of that nose. Then just see how you get just a wee line down from there and then for the mouth, it's just a slight downturned because <laughs> she's a fed up cat. <laughs> right and then whiskers, lots of whiskers, nice and light starting from here curving out so one, two, three, four, five, six and see how I'm, I'm doing that flicking thing. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, however many. <laughs> okay and then imagine that line goes down just, just there just do three wee sort of flicks there, like that. That's her chin. Okay, we're nearly done. <laughs> so come down the bottom here, and we're just going to imagine there's a line there. So just go to the right of that and draw a straight line down, and then come up here and do a curve, so a bit like a sort of chicken leg shape, and then just put a little foot. So the foot goes curved to the right like that and round and joins up with that. Same one here, a straight line down like that, a curved line coming down, a curve to left like that, and then there's a line there in the middle, there's a little foot here, and there's a little foot here, and there's just a wee line like that there, and then there's little claws, so Curving that way, one, two, one, two, one, two, two. Okay, so this is Chloe almost done, apart from her tail. Oh, and here, see how you did those three little things? So here, just do maybe three or four bigger ones just to show the fur on her tummy. And then the tail comes out from over here. So just basically come out to the left. Curve up like that, and then come out here, and it's thicker there. But as you get to that bit, bring it in slightly, so it's slightly thinner as you get to the top. There we go. Now, if you've not seen the film, you'll have no idea what you've just drawn. But if you've seen the film, you'll be, I think, quite impressed with yourself because. There is Chloe the cat <laughs> from Pets at Home, not Pets at Home, <laughs> I was about to call it Pets at Home, The Secret Life of Pets. So hopefully you've managed today and you've managed to draw a mug, a cushion, a little scene with flowers, a cat, a cartoon cat. You're all artists now. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed yourselves, that is the main thing.